In this demonstration, I'll show you how to find the constant C after finding the antiderivative. Let's get started with question number one. Here we are told that f prime at x is equal to x squared and f at 0 is equal to 5. Find f at x. The first thing we'll do to tackle this question is to find the antiderivative of f prime. And we learned in previous videos that to find the antiderivative, you will increase this number 2 by 1. And then you take that number and you make it the denominator, plus c where c is a constant that may or may not have existed. We're also told that f at 0 is equal to 5. And the way we interpret this is we set all x values equal to 0 and make the equation equal to 5. So we have 5 is equal to 0 to the power of 3 over 3 plus c. This cancels out, goes to 0, and you end up with a c value of 5. So therefore, our final formula is equal to f at x, x to the power of 3 over 3 plus 5. Let's move on to question 2. Here we're told that f prime is equal to this function and f at 1 is equal to a third. Find f at x. We'll use the same steps as before. We're going to find the antiderivative of this, f at x is equal to, and I'm going to rewrite it in such a way where it's easy for us to find the antiderivative, x to the power of 5 over x to the power of 3, we can use the quotient rule for exponents to reduce this, plus 3 times the square root of x over x to the power of 3. So I'm going to use the quotient rule here, and not to confuse it with the quotient rule in calculus, but the algebraic exponential rules x to the power of 5 over x to the power of 3 becomes x to the power of 2. And here what we have is the following. 3 times the square root of x times x to the power of negative 3. With that said, we can convert this into exponential form and add these two together. And if we do that, we end up with 3x to the power of negative 2.5. So I'm going to place that right here. And next, what I'll do is find the antiderivative. The antiderivative for this is equal to x to the power of 3 over 3. The antiderivative to this will equal to 3x negative 1.5 over negative 1.5, which gives us 3x negative 1.5 over negative 3 over 2. And this becomes... 6 x to the power of negative 1.5 over 3. And don't forget the negative, and this reduces to negative 2 x to the power of negative 1.5. So we're going to place that right here, negative 2 x to the power of negative 1.5 plus c. The next step is to evaluate this function at 1. Now we know that at 1 it's going to be a third. So we're going to write down 1 over 3 is equal to 1. And we're placing this x with that 1 to the power of 3. That becomes a third. 2 times 1 to the power of negative 1.5 is equal to 2 plus c. We're going to bring that over. And they cancel. And we're also going to bring that over as well. And therefore c is equal to 2. So our final function, I'm going to write it out here because I'm running out of space, is equal to plus 2. Let's proceed. The final question is slightly more complicated than the previous two. Here they give us the second derivative and this time we have sine x. Now we're going to use our table here and we know that sine x becomes negative cosine x. So let's start off by finding the first antiderivative. f double prime of x is equal to sine x plus x. And the f prime of this is equal to negative cosine x. And that becomes x to the power of 2 over 2 plus c. 
Now, interestingly, they tell us that f prime at 0 is equal to 2. So let's find out what c is moving forward. 2 is equal to negative cosine at 0 plus, well, this b go, goes to 0, plus c. Now, what's cosine at 0? If you recall, cosine at 0 is equal to 1. So you have 2 is equal to negative 1 plus c, and therefore c is equal to 3. So I'm going to rewrite f prime, including c. Now recall, the question wants f at x. And we're also told that f at 0 is equal to 7. So keep that in mind moving forward. Let's find the antiderivative of this. Negative cosine x becomes, let's use our chart, negative cosine x becomes negative sine x plus, and once again, we're finding the antiderivative, so that becomes x to the power of 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. 3 becomes 3x, plus, we're going to add another arbitrary value, but this time we're going to call it d, because we can't use c, we already used it. And we know that, according to the question, at 0, f is 7. So we're going to apply 0 into all of these x's to find our d. That goes to nothing, that goes to nothing, that goes to nothing. So therefore, our d value is 7. So to write this all out nice and clean, we end up with negative sine x plus one-sixth of x to the power of 3 plus 3x plus 7. And there you have it. That is how to use clues given the first or second derivative to find the arbitrary value that existed. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.